Greetings. I'm going to do a video today about crushing and straining honey. Uh, this type of harvest is what you use when you do not have an extractor, or when you are a top bar uh, hive keeper like I am, or if you do uh, cutouts, meaning bee removals from walls. Uh, the honeycomb is in all kinds of weird shapes, and you just gather it in a bucket, and then you're going to crush and strain it later. In this particular case, I just did a cutout yesterday, and this being September 26th of 2009, it is likely my last cutout for the year, and I wanted to do a good video on that. Uh, when you're doing cutouts, uh, you want to put the cured honey in a separate bucket than the possibly cured, somewhat uncured. Uh, that honey, the uncured honey, should be fed back to your apiary, and the cured honey is going to be uh, taken home and crushed and strained. You can throw in apparently cured honeycombs in with your cured honey and you'll still have a good moisture ratio, hopefully of less than 18% water. That will keep it uh, good for many years. First thing to do, let's go look at our honey. Okay, now in this case we have uncapped honey here and uncapped honey here. Uh, you can't tell maybe from the video, but we have cured honey there and cured honey over here. The first thing to do when you are doing uh, crush and strain is DB your honey. Bees do get in there while you're harvesting and when you're doing cutouts. And if you have anyone helping you, nothing sucks worse than having them crush a, a bee while they're crushing honey and they get stung. So that's the first thing to do is to make sure you've got all your honey clear of bees. After you have the uh, honey free of bees, you need to put down some paper towels or some newspaper or whatever paper you have around, uh, around the vessel you're going to crush in because you are going to get honey everywhere. You're also going to need some kind of pan or container to dip your hands in because you're going to get sticky and honey's going to get everywhere. Uh, just a water filled pan is fine. Uh, third is the crushing uh, container. In this case it's a five gallon bucket. I'm going to use a five gallon bucket even though I don't like it because I have very little honey. Uh, normally, I would be using a long, shallow uh, container, preferably about two and a half feet long, like a storage tub underneath a bed. Uh, that is because you'll have easier access to crushing all the honeycomb. In this case, there's very little honeycomb, and I don't mind going ahead and crushing it in the container that I recovered it in. Uh, second, or third, you're going to need something to crush and strain into. The straining equipment is important. Uh, I'm going to be straining through a five gallon bucket paint strainer, about 50 cents available at most hardware stores. I'm going to be using half a bucket to hold my strainer to keep the bottom of the strainer out of the honey itself. And this is a very nice uh, mixing five gallon paint bucket it tells me how much gallonage I've got, or if you're with the 21st century, how many liters you have. And you're looking at about four liters per gallon for those of you who are not on the, uh, the metric system. All right, so this is quite handy to tell you how much honey you really have, so you know how many bottles you need to get. Uh, at Dadence, you can get a simple um, uh, gate valve, about 10 bucks. You have to drill a two inch hole or an inch and a half hole and screw this in. So how it all fits together. And if I was putting a lot of comb weight I'm going to lift this up and then tuck the edges of the strainer into it so it can support more weight. 
and that's on the inside. Once I crush this comb into very, uh, very tightly and crush all the honey out of the combs, you dump all the honey and wax into this. It takes about five days to get 96% of your honey out, and then you can wait another two weeks if you want the last 99%. Uh, but you're asking for trouble at that point. Anyway, let's get to crushing. The trick is to make sure you get all the honey out. So you crush it into nice small chunks. Alright, there's a bee body. Don't want to crush little bees. There are presses you can use that will press honey. Uh, a fruit press is commonly used for like pressing apples. But they're kind of expensive, a few hundred bucks. So if you're going to spend money, uh, tr you can do it. Ultimately, you're looking for a paste of sorts. Did I mention this was messy? Once you start uh, collecting your honey at the hive, you really have a matter of about four or five days before you should start crushing strain because wax moth small hive beetle or other pests will become a nuisance pretty quick and possibly spoil the honey. Now I've also heard of using a, a paint stirring uh, device attached to a powerful drill to stir up fresh comb. If you were doing a cutout and this was darker comb, second year comb, it is very tough like cardboard and you're going to have a heck of a time uh, trying to crush it with any method except the bare hand. It's like uh, triple ply cardboard that TVs are shipped in. Brood comb that had honey stored in it is tough, tough stuff. Okay, this feels good. Uh, if you can, uh, do not put any honeycomb in here that has pollen still in it because that pollen will uh, make the honey quite bitter if you crush it in there. You want to cut that pollen stuff out and throw the honeycomb in here and throw any part of the honeycomb that still has honey in with your uh, semi-bad honeycomb that the bees are going to clean for you. Quite a few honeybees made it into this. And dead bees can sting. Don't let that uh, fool you that they're dead. Alright, at this point I think I'm done crushing. The next step to do is uh, pour this into the five gallon bucket that's got the strainer. All right, now comes the fun part. I'm going to pour the, the crushed mass of honey and wax into this, and this is going to catch and hold uh, all the, the the mass. If there was going to be a lot of weight, I'd put uh, clips, big honking uh, uh, binder clips on this, so it'd hold more weight, or I could use uh, a lot a safety, uh, of safety of clothespins. In this case, it's not much weight. Uh, maybe about five, uh, five pounds, maybe eight, 